about the use of pollution as a successor of pestilence in the Four Horsemen? I was grateful. Yeah. Because I, I <laughs> well, it's slightly outdated in a way to have pestilence-ish. I yeah. don't know now there's anti-vaxxers, etc. But, um, well, I think it's very relevant. I mean, we feel it now, don't we? Um, also, it's fun. Because also, you know, when you're playing kind of a concept character, the research instead of say family history or I mean you can have that as well but for me it made me really think about what is the nature of pollution which is kind of an ironic sentence to say but you know pollution happens because people don't care too much pollution happens incrementally it's not like a bomb you know pollution accrues because you know you can't be asked to dump this in the bin that's 10 steps away you just go you know and you think it's not going to make a difference. And then everyone else is the same thing. They don't care that much. And um, I'm going all philosophical on this. But, but yeah. Did you anticipate Good Omens being as popular as it is? Not this popular. I knew it was going to be popular. I didn't realize it was going to be that much popular. But also, I think... I always knew that we would have a big following from the books and the combined love for Terry and Neil. Um, but also, Amazon Studios, Amazon Prime went above and beyond with the marketing campaign. Never seen anything like never been part of anything like it. Um, it's funny when we were filming because I remember David was saying, he turned around and said, God, this might just be the biggest, most expensive thing I've been in. And, you know, I was in Harry Potter. <laughs> so, you know, quite often you're, you can be in an expensively shot show, but then it's not marketed the same way. So it kind of, it, it lets the, all that work down. It wasn't in this. Yeah. So I think that contributed as well to it being as popular as it is. Okay. Plus, it's a good old show. <laughs> playing a character who's been interpreted as non-binary? I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant and I love the fact also that we don't make a big deal out of it. Like with any minority diversity, you know, any minority representation, I'm a minority, you know. Uh, it is the dream that we are just part of the picture rather than having to be made a uh, uh, like you know to, to have like a highlighter and say oh look what we did no it's just that's what it is and also you very hard you know it's rare for you to actually hear the pronouns that are so important to the MBT community and to then to just even be to see themselves on screen and something this big let alone you know like a, you know but it's, um, it's wonderful and um, what was it that made you take the role <laughs> well if I were John Hamm, I would quote and quote say the money. No. <laughs> now that's just John being facetious. We all took the roles we did because we love the we love the team and we love the book and the script is some of the best scripts I've ever ever read. Um, so to be part of something like this is a huge privilege. You know? So of course yes. Of course, yes, any time to Douglas McKinnon. Of course, yes, any time to Neil and to Amazon. And one last question. Um, what's your opinion on the zero fail and Crowley? Friends or lovers? Why can't they be both? Hey. <laughs> Must it always be one or the other?